environments and we would come in and it was maybe this bedroom was maybe more than one floor. So there are actually some libraries you can use for this, but um, I recommend against it. If you want Craft Light as a tiny little bit of a solution to it, uh, and if you use one of the ba basic libraries that you can find on the internet, you won't know how many of those features will be valid at the end. Uh, it's better to understand the actual user progression, and it's a pretty simple concept if you can kind of understand it. This is just a new dimension for me, especially having grown with that attitude of doing this image, which is just this tiny little bit. I changed the wood and the environment and texture. So that's it. That's the video. Thanks for having me on. First off is we're going to go ahead and we're going to record some basic Unity assets. So we have here things like the Unity Image Editor. Because I like to just do pretty cool things, I got to. And it turns out that perhaps I haven't made this Unity editor run using the Prime Studio. The Prime Studio has some interesting size limits. All right, so what we have is this first image that we made. This should be all clear. Oh, wait, this has a camera in it because I believe the camera is moving, so it's not really clear. Um, but this is the camera we want to put our skybox in, so let's go ahead and do that. Skybox. There it is. Let's go ahead and build our first little skybox as a craft light. Yeah. Now it will play. Oh, skybox. We're actually now falling over there. We have a good catches. So let's go ahead and take a look. Where are we? We are here. Okay. It's kind of in the middle of nowhere. We just put our tent that's over us there. And now let's go ahead and build a clip. standing on a brick. The digits are already being turned. That is one hell of a giant brick. So let's go ahead and get this done. Alright, first thing we need is a material. So let's go ahead and build a tile. We'll call it uh, tile map. And we will go ahead and drag the tile to the top of the tile right here. Perfect. Oh, look at how dark it is. Let's go ahead and add ourselves a little light. That's all of the Unity built-in assets we need. From here on out, everything is custom. So we'll have a light right here. So let's create ourselves a C Sharp image. We could name it anything. We can name it Adobe JavaScript, which I wouldn't recommend it. Um, so let's call it Chunk. Uh, we probably won't get it to wide, but Chunk is a better name. And we can drag it right here. Like this. So let's open our Chunk file. I'm using MonoDevelop. MonoDevelop is a very included development kit. It's not absolutely terrible, so it is nice. So the first thing to realize about all of those beautiful little renderings is that those bricks are not individual objects uh, that would be crazy and have millions of different different kinds of objects. Instead, each brick is usually identified by a very, very small number uh, of, of states. So for example, let's take a look at the word pipe. So each brick is going to be represented by the letter pipe. That is number 0056. Okay, pipe. Okay. We're also going to go ahead and create a gate pipe, which is a pretty small piece of concrete. And that will be the size of the pipe. So here we go now using a pipe tool. Pipe. initializing the pipe correctly. C sharp is kind enough to initialize all the materials, so we need to at the space bar add in some actual solid states. Now here you have to make a decision as to whether or not you want to go by unity um, uh, extra power or is that a different use? The more sensible for it is, uh, we're going to use unity coordinates just because this is actually the same, not a y. Basically, uh, we're going to make the lowest layer of this grid. We're going to make it a solid. So we're going to go ahead and 
Jesus is the is the the one. And so now we have a lot of moments where they're just silent and they're just there. But the gifts they are about to give are child and they're just there as just servants to fill the place. One is the gift of forgiveness that they have been given through baptism. And two is that they have been given the ability to pray for one another. Now this will give us enough of a chance to work one more thing out. Unfortunately it's a light thing. And it will actually explain if we don't cast death into this one because the light thing is not there. So we'll just cast it. There we go. So you won't be able to tell because <laughs> if I go back here and hit play, nothing happens. Um, oh, I don't think this button even makes sense. I never remember which way it is or what it's doing. So here we are. We hit play. There's no difference. All we've really done is kind of map the animation. What we need to do is use it. All right, and here is the heart of the matter. First off, we're going to do some best practices to require the opponent to type up the short form. This means that the written question requires you to have the mesh filter attached to the short form. Uh, now we do have a mesh filter attached to it, and it's right there. Um, so that's because we're going to be building a mesh. So let's go ahead and build ourselves a mesh. Template mesh. Exciting. So if you want to see what we just did, we just broke the brick. It's not there anymore. So you can see that the brick is still here. We have this huge header. And we're still using the box and the lighter, so we can still stand on them. But it's no longer a mesh anymore. Well, it's time to teach you how to assemble a mesh. It's actually pretty straightforward. We're going to use um, a bit of a shortcut that is uh, maybe not best practices, but it is decent enough in our purposes. So we're going to create template list method three. Oops, that's a three. This will be our list of vertexes, but I'm actually not there in vertex number one. I'm in vertex number two. Template list eight equals, and just to future proof it a little bit, template list method two equals so the verts are the pieces of our mesh, the triangles are how the pieces connect up, and the VVs are what part of the mesh do what. So we're going to go ahead and edit the function that we're requiring them to reach out to us. Here's the verts. doesn't matter now uh, because we're still copying it. But if we ever want to make a change, we're going to roll this flex spec that we've been rid of the other day up. Also, the VVs are a little bit picky. Um, if you assign a VV or set the vertices and the verts of a triangle as a five, it's probably going to go to one of those. So go ahead and say one triangle and triangle and two verts. Try step two again, and that will clear out all of our trouble. Right? Because that's tries that we can't get to we've just set it to one of the examples of one. All right, so now what we have to do is actually generate all of the faces we need. We're actually going to work on generating individual faces. Um, now, I know some engines work on generating the, uh, uh, the framework and connecting them with faces using the triangle, but we're actually going to create four distinct vertexes for every single face. That means that if you have a block that sticks up out of the ground, you're going to be wasting some faces. Um, you're also going to have you're going to be wasting faces regardless. Um, but I don't know what I meant to say. You're going to be wasting vertexes regardless. But um, optimizing it is not going to be a trouble. So we'll do it by creating all of the faces of every single face. We're going to have four vertexes. That way, there's no faces to share with other faces. What am I talking about, you ask? Shut up, you're making no sense. All right, this is what I'm talking about. So let's go back up here. It looks familiar. That looks bad. Let's go back up here. But 
this case, we also need y. We might as well go ahead and make this a little bit bigger instead. So what do we need to do? All right, we can say that's the product of y equals x y z. Ooh, excited, right? Now, if the log is 0 and the root, we don't need to create anything but that good big sign. So if we get here, we need to probably create something, but maybe not. How do we know which bases to create? I don't know. Let's go ahead and create a new function then, shall we? Public rule root x parallel root root x y comma z. Now I get a lot of slow down here, so I'm going to so, well, how do we do the z's count first? Uh, if the case, let's say x is less than 0 or y is less than 0 or z is less than 0 or x is greater than or equal to 1 root or y is greater than or equal to 3 or z is greater than or equal to 3. Now you can either make this false or true. If you make it true, that means you're going to be drawing boundaries uh, at the edges of the block. Otherwise, you're not. We're going to go ahead and make it true. So what we've just said is, if you're asking for something that's not on our map, we'll consider it not right, not there. So then we say uh, return block, right? Map x y z equals zero, and that just says if it's zero, it's transparent. Otherwise, it's not. Um, in the long run, we're not going to get a lot more money, but we can pick up the tab for fun. So now we say if. Let's go ahead and split this up into its own function too. Let's go function z. Uh, if x, y, z equals y. So we'll go ahead and print that. I tend to put shift on there just for um, for fun, but we can change that up. Print x equals y. Okay. All right. So there are six. Six possible cases in which we can draw it. Let's go ahead and draw them. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to find a vector u. Let's call that. Uh, we'll call this this guy here vector u. Okay, x, y, z. We'll need these two uh, later. Now, let's go ahead and do some work. If roots transparent x, y minus the 1, z. So if it's transparent above us, then we need to draw a face above us. Um, except in this case, it's actually below us. But that's OK, because we have two. So since we're doing that, we offset the x and y rows. And we need two roots. If it's at the top, we need to draw that face around the x-axis and the z-axis, because the y-axis is the one that we're offsetting on. So, there we go. This is the x-axis, and this is the z-axis. So now we're going to make yet another function, another uh, function vector. So, public, oh, I forgot my rule. It's like 100 degrees here, so if you're wondering why there's an extra missing vector, it's because it's 100 degrees. You may be wondering why I'm passing that block vector. We may want to include that. We probably won't even get there in this video, but I'll show you how to do it in just a minute. All right, so we need to draw a face. And what we need to actually do is create four new vector trees. So those vector trees are roots.math start. Here they are, alphabetically. X, Y, Z, U. Roots, X, Y, Z, start, start, start. Woohoo! So now we actually have the vertexes, but Aren't we forgetting something? Like, 
happens. Actually, this is actually a, a, a little bit, I do this because it's just a little bit easier to get to the next step. So a face, these triangles are triangles. You need three vertices. If you have four vertices, you only need two triangles. That means you need six integers. The way a triangle works is it lists the number of the vertices tall. So if you just started, this would be vertex 0, vertex 1, vertex 2, vertex 3. So we need to go ahead and think of basically something like this. Now I can never remember exactly which direction it is in my head, which one is going the wrong direction, the one that's right, the one that's going one way, the one that's going the wrong way. Our triangles are, um, they don't have a back face. So if we get them wrong, then we will end up with something like this, right? Oh, I forgot, there we go. I can't shrink it. It'll, we'll probably end up with a raised body. I'm not sure which one. Okay, so yeah, so we're gonna raise. Remember this function here where we're doing all of the work? After we've drawn all of the bricks, we need to move the mesh around the vertices. So see here, it's just four steps to a row. Mesh around triangles, raise triangles. Oops, I forgot that one, sorry about that. We also, for future people, need to go ahead and recalculate raised triangles. We're gonna need them. show you a way to make that work with this function. Let me change the order here because I like this, right? And as you can see, we've got some faces that are visible from up above and then some that are visible from below. And that was kind of a mess. So make sure you get that right or else you will get goofed. Actually, yeah, there we go. Uh, so I just drew at the bottom. So believe it or not, this is kind of wrong. I'll show you why here. Go ahead and create. We want to do this one. Right? Let's go ahead and see how this works. Oh, yeah, this is almost. So I'm in scene view right now. And you can see that we've got two layers. We've got the lower layer and the upper layer. But wait a minute, we can't even see the lower layer from the top because the scene's not working out and our lower layer is pointing the wrong direction. We should only be able to see it from the roof. So uh, what's wrong here is that we've cast it vector 3.right. We should in fact be casting it vector 3.left. But if we do it like that and just like that, then we'll end up offset in the wrong direction. So we need to actually add this. So in case I just lost you, what I've done is all wrong. What I've done here in scene view so I haven't created any of the walls yet. I've only created the tops. So here you can see that uh, it's a little bit difficult to see because of the partition we have, but you've got two bricks on the bottom and then two bricks above. That bottom layer is all filled in and the top layer is spotty. Remember how we created it like that? So here we can see the parts where the top layer fills in, there's no face in the layer beneath. See that? This brick does exist, this brick down here, does exist, but you can't see the top face, so we don't need to now bother to draw it. And then if you go down below, you can see that we have the entire bottom drawn out because this is the bottom, there's nothing beneath it, so all of those faces need to be drawn. But wait, 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 if you ask me, um, that's not a real brick. You're right, it is too thin. We do in fact need to take this here so now uh, now in scene view we're going to go ahead and see that the bricks have a serious thickness to them they are thick now let's go ahead and go and just fill in the other walls real quick so we do that by simply saying Now the 
problem is we've got all this rage for uh, y-axis that we're no longer rooting for the y-axis. Um, so if you're in the x-axis, for example, here we've got a left, um, but we're already to the left, so we can't go any further left or otherwise it doesn't do any good. But this actually goes to the right, and that's where we draw the left wall up and back. This here, this is the down wall. We need to draw the right wall down. I'll show it, but we need to draw the down wall through this one. I'll show it again, but this is the down. This is the down wall. And here, where we've got this from right to the up and back, here where we've got this being up, we need to draw some being down. Okay, so we just draw the left wall up and down. Oh, yeah. Did I get this backwards with the X? No, I didn't. I got it right. The z-axis is going to be crazy right now, so I'm going to have to like make up for that time somehow. Oh, there we go. All right, so did we get the x-axis this turn? No, we didn't. Oh, it's back. What a sad state of affairs. So sometimes you run into something like this, and it's really easy to start getting your head all twisted up about the way you're treating this rich. Um, just gotta break it down and make sure you understand which cases are what and what aren't. In this case, the problem is that we're drawing this too far to the side. Definitely have to add some extra blue squeeze spaces in there. spot but they're pointed the wrong direction. No problem, right? They're pointed the wrong direction. Yeah, we've got the wrong one of these. When I say down, we want up. We get like this. So how are we supposed to do that? needs to be down, which means that this needs to be up, and this needs to be up. Now, if we were doing this the first time, we'd probably have to have done that. Now, I'm sure that there are other ways to, you know, there's, there's good ways to memorize these and figure it out perfectly, but I want you to really understand that even when it feels complicated, it's not. You just have to isolate which face is which screen and which child you're looking at. So in this case, now both of the X faces are pointed towards the top of the Z axis. And they pointed up and down, of course. That's the kind of thing brains are for. So here, we don't need to draw back for the entire back. Instead, what we need to do is draw up. said no edit command, so maybe not the ideal way to get something crazy. Let's just do it like this. I'd like to claim that every time I do it, it gets easier, but I always forget which of these screens I'm doing this on. This is just a thing. Um, I hope that I never have to figure out. Oh, you know what it is?
voila. So if we cruise around, we can see that this is a third function of n. Uh, so let's make this because I think this is going to be the third function of n. Yep, so there's the third function of n. Oh no! Unity makes this part really easy. This is the big easy goof goof for this. Is this box slider? We don't need it. Instead, what we need is a connection button. Oops. So over here, instead of this wire coming out, we made another one. And we're going to want to make reference to that thing over here that we made a while ago. There's some way to make that work without setting up a null first, but I don't think null first works. Um, so what happens is this will automatically force it to recalculate all this stuff. Oh, we're going to get that. Oh, we don't have this yet. It's supposed to be inside of this. the texture? What about editing stuff? What about this? What about that? I'm out of time and space on this answer wheeler thing, so I'm hoping that you two will go ahead and do it next time. So.